Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, from James with RV Outlet USA. Hope you're having a great day. We're going to do a walkthrough. I'm going to do a very thorough walkthrough on the Keystone Raptor 351 Toy Hauler. We're the Toy Hauler Specialist. We sell more than anybody. East of the Rockies, we're top three in the country when it comes to toy haulers. So we are the experts when it comes to toy haulers and toy hauler sales. So let's go through it and get to it. Starting here, we're going to get, notice that the Raptor has premium latches thicker door this is for thicker insulation here down here I'm gonna bring you around here for just a second you see right here is the in command system that in command is the brain box for this whole unit we'll go into that more as we get into that got some lights up here storage full all the way through this is a heated storage area down here and of course right here and then this come on in here this is your hydraulic leveling system okay so at the top of this, and, and I know a lot of people misplace this, right here is the Allen head. It takes a quarter inch Allen head, and this will draw the fluid back up in it if you need to uh, manually bring up the jacks. Also, you have to open up these actuators. It looks like a little gear right here on this, and you can see it really good right here. That's a little gear looking thing, but actually on the end of it is where you put the Allen head and you turn that Allen head. So. With that being said, this is the hydraulic system that controls your six point auto leveling uh, and some slides are also controlled by that with different units. This particular unit does not have that. All right, we're gonna come out here to the pin box. This is Rotoflex by Trill. Okay, so this pin box actually has a dampening system on it right here. This keeps it from chucking when you hit those bumps and whatnot, it dampens that chucking. So this is, we got the upgraded pin box here come in here this is going to be your propane compartment propane on this you've got a switch here that lever actually points to which tank it's going to green means you're actually good and red means you're empty so you can switch this tank over to this point or to that point depending on which tank you want this one has the 30 pounder tanks on it so this is 30 pound 30 pound All right, come on back slide back here this is going to be your generator compartment okay so let's talk about the generator very important this 5500 owning generator I'm gonna pop this off this generator is designed to operate with this on but a few things about the generator most people don't go into uh, this generator is a carburetor generator okay with the ethanol gas that we have right now that uh, can get gummed up so you really want to run this about 15 minutes 30 minutes a month to keep that gas from uh, gelling up inside of here this right here is the drain cock that you can open this up if you're having a prime lock where it's not allowing it to flow. Open this up, hit the prime here, which is the start prime over here on this side. And as you see here, the start prime opens up, gets this going, and it'll shoot a little bit of gas out of there. You know it's got it primed in the bowl. Air filter replacements, you want to go through that. Make sure you've got all of that done. The oil filter down here at the bottom, it's, you can access it from the bottom of this, but it's right here. And again, to start this generator, what you're going to do is you're going to press this right here until the red light comes on. It's primed, and then you can press and hold it. Now, I'm not going to start it all the way up because I'm hooked to the um, electric system here. But you can press hold this all the way through the fire cycle, and then once it fires up, then you can let off of that. This is your 230 amp breakers right here. Um, a lot of times you want to make sure these stay on at all times so whenever you fire this it'll actually come on and it'll energize. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute for your uh, electrical energy to come on board once you do that. Alright, put that back in place. We got our docking lights here. So we've got docking lights that are out here on the front of the unit. And that's back out here. Watch your head, Jeff. Come back out, and then you see your docking lights right here. This is so that you can see it at night, or if you just want to look cool, it's got it all right here on the front of the unit. All right, so let's talk about this. Here's your leveling system. All right, so these jacks by LCI, these are hydraulic jacks. You can notice that because of the round pole here, and then also the round foot plate. Now, these put out 10,000 pounds of lift force. You got six of these, so that's 60,000 pounds of lift force, okay? Which is kind of cool. All right, Brian? So we got 60,000 pounds of lift force, and then this hall has an auto leveling system. Okay, so this system, you power it up right here. You go through here, it's got jacks down. It actually tells you what your voltage is right now. It's charging, so you're at 13.9 volts, which is cool. Gives you your side to side, front to back. Auto retract, enter to begin, uh, and then manual mode, and then jack's ready. 
this is your nice little feature when you press this button it auto levels for you retract you can manually retract and you hit that button there and it retracts them side to side now let's go ahead and hit the auto level button and you'll notice you'll notice that this unit is going to start leveling itself front to back and then it's going to put the rear jacks down and level itself side to side of course it's got the battery compartment right here you can actually stack multiple batteries here you can put six volt batteries instead of a 12 volt in there if you'd like and what's going to happen is this is going to move up and down and then it's finally it's going matter of fact you can take a look right now there it goes down the side legs right there all right and it's going to start putting that pressure down and start moving it side to side once it's done leveling it's going to give you an audio code that hey it's done leveling auto level success and i actually read up here auto level success as well so now, when you're not using, you want to make sure you turn this off because it is a battery hog. So, we'll let that finish up. While that's finishing up, we'll take a look at the command and control compartment here, okay? So up here, at the top of this, we've actually got a outside shower. It uses a uh, little, like, a, like an air chuck that goes in right here. You got hot and cold. Then you've got the winterize. Uh, this is to turn off your uh, water to the hot water tank, hot water bypass, and then also uh, power flush, op excuse me, power fill options, <laughs> not flush option. You've got the winterizing kit right here. You actually hook your winterization tube to this and pump it in. This is your city water connection. This is your pressurized. And that audible beat that just happened, that is the auto level success. All right, so this is your pressurized connection right here you can also fill up your uh, tank by using this as well in your onboard tank if you're going dry camping the black tank flush okay so we're going to get into that one in just a second let me hit the other features here this is of course your battery cutoff if you're not using this unit want to turn the battery cutoff on okay so what does that do that keeps your battery from draining down because the unit has always got parasitic drain so you want to make sure that the unit is not losing that down here is going to be your key tv that's a new feature from Keystone. Uh, this is going to remove you from having to worry about the, um, the antenna booster. So this does it all for you now. Then right here, these are your low point drains. That's the drain that's for winterizing. Uh, so that drains all your water lines that are on board. Okay, so let's come back to the black tank flush because I think it's very important we go over that. And you'll see down here, down at the bottom, we've got a Y connector where both of these tanks are coming together at this point. And when you go to pull your tanks, your way that you're gonna pull, you're gonna pull black tank first. That's gonna start number uh, the number two moving out. All your solids, your toilet paper, you want that moving forward. And then you're gonna pull your gray. Your gray is gonna help push and usher that out. Once it gets out, then uh, with the tanks open, okay, with the valves open, you wanna make sure that you hook up the black tank flush. That flushes out the residuals that are in the black tank one word of caution make sure that you don't close your valves and then and then use the black tank flush because you're going to have a poo geyser inside and you don't want that okay you want to make sure that you don't have a back filling up into your coach with uh the stuff from the black tank okay so black tank flush with the valves open so that's the key there and you affectionately put your stinky slinky at the end of that and run it right down to the sewer that's there all right another thing you're going to notice here right come on back around here We've got the exhaust down here. That's for the uh, that's for the uh, generator up here. Then we've got the exhaust right here. This is the furnace. This is extremely hot. Also, you want to put a bee guard over top of this because bugs, critters, and everything in the wintertime like to get in here. And let's talk about the hot water heater, okay? Hot water heater. We're going to take this completely off because I want you guys to be able to see everything in here. Very important part of the coach. This particular piece is going to be your plug. It is also an anoid rod on this. What this does is it's designed to disintegrate over a period of time with the minerals, okay? So it uh, disintegrates from campground minerals, uh, from the water that's getting in there, and it just keeps your water from... When you're not using your coach and not using your camper, take the plug out, winter, kind of semi-winterize your hot water heater by just taking the plug out and keeping it drained. This is your, uh, this is your pressure relief valve. It also allows you to open it up and allows the air to escape as your hot water is filling up and you'll see water gushing out of here. It tells you it's an indicator that this is full. One of the other big, big, big things that happens is right down here. Okay, so we got this little switch right here. What does this do? Okay, this is a very important switch. You have this particular 
hot water heater is a gas electric so it has a gas burner and it has also the electric element inside the element will burn out if you do not have water in it the other thing is, is the reason why they want you to have this switch here is a master switch for the electric so you flip it on here and then you flip it on inside this is your master so that you don't turn it on inside without making sure that you got water in the unit so you it's a safety feature to keep you from burning out your element but you want to make sure that you turn this on before you turn the water on the hot water on the inside and the big key there is going to be making sure that you don't have issues with burning out your element so that's the reason that's there and just remember if you don't turn this on you turn the one on the inside guess what you're not going to have hot water and you're gonna wake up taking a cold shower the next morning. Okay, come on down the unit here. This is the back of the fridge. This particular one has two vents, one vent here, one vent here. Now, the vent at the top is because this actually burns the, the ammonia, heats it up, and then expels the heat out the top. On a, a unit that has a fridge without a slide, it's gonna have a chimney on top versus the extra vent. <coughs> Excuse me. This one has an internal drain cock. So you don't have to worry about that there. One other little keynote here is that if you look down here, I don't know if you can see that, this has open vents, okay? When you're washing your unit, don't spray up, okay? Don't, because if you spray up, it's gonna go inside your unit, it's gonna get into stuff. And you don't want water inside of an RV, okay? Next, we're gonna come down here and uh, we're gonna talk about the tires, okay? So your bearings every two years, 12,000 miles, you wanna make sure that you check those. A good thing to do is to put some, uh, you, they've got the tire menders now, which is the pressure uh, indicators. It tells you wirelessly what's going on. Highly recommend those. Otherwise, make sure that you carry a tire gauge with you and check your tire pressures all the time, okay? It's a really good habit to get into because these things blow tires a lot. So you wanna make sure that you're, you're not getting yourself in a predicament. You also wanna make sure that you keep your, um, your shacks, shackles here keep those you know hit them with WD-40 back in there just keep those from uh, rusting up on you and of course you're gonna have another gray tank pull back here now let's talk about this area here some toy haulers come with one tank only for the fuel station okay which the generator and the fuel tank runs off of that some of those are options that a dealership can buy and they may or may not have it so that's something you want to make sure that you ask does it have dual fuel tanks okay the reason why you have a dual fuel tank is one is for the auxiliary, which is this right here, and then the other one is for the generator. Runs off the generator. Now, the cool part is, you take this out, well, it's got the pump behind this, I'm not gonna open that. But, if you run out of fuel and you're just dry camping, you can actually pump from the auxiliary tank over here to the generator and keep it running. So you've got more than enough for a weekend. This is gonna be the system that turns that pump on and off, right here. 50 amp service hit right here. So you got your 50 amp cable here. All right, one of the biggest things that you wanna make sure of is if you put 50 amp service at your house and you have an electrician put in a service for you, okay? Make sure that you tell them it is 120 volts, not 220. Because they see two leads, they think it's, it's gonna to add together and make it 220. That's not the case. Make sure they understand it's 120 volts, 50 amps, okay? Of course, you got your roof ladder rack right here. Excuse me, the, the uh, ladder is gonna allow you to have roof access so you can check things. You wanna be able to get up there and look at your lap sealant. You wanna look at which is your roof caulking and you wanna be able to, to check and make sure it's not dry rotted, dry, dry crack, okay? So what happens is uh, the biggest thing that we see is people don't take the time to do preventive maintenance on their units. They don't take the time to look at the roofs and inspect it to make sure that they don't have uh, issues with that. And, I'll show you right here. This is one of the biggies right here, okay? So we're talking about sealants, and I know it's a little bit of pollen right here. You've got a sealant right here, okay? Everywhere that you have a penetration on this sidewall, you're gonna have glazing or sealant uh, of some sort. Now that sealant can be caulking, it can be uh, butyl tape, it can be lap sealant. If those dry out or they crack, that's gonna allow water intrusion, the water gets in, and then the heat does its job so the sun dries it out the water intrudes it then it gets in here and goes up and it disintegrates the luon and the glue inside of here and you get separation of this wall called delamination you don't want that or it'll rot it out another big key is right here 
same thing right here. If you leave your slides, we're gonna talk about the slides here too. These slides have wiper seals right here and you see the seal right there. Then it also has a glazing here and it also has the bottom here, okay? And then if you look right back here, we have the back of this. You see how this comes out four inches here? This four inches comes back here and it actually protects the wipers, okay? The sun will get on these wipers and it will dry it out and dry rot it and crack it and allow water intrusion. You don't want that. That's something that you really, really don't want. You want to make sure if you're storing your unit, keep your slides in and protects those. Even if you have slide toppers, it's going to disintegrate the top of the edges of the roof here. So you want to make sure that the roofing on the slides is covered on that. All right, let's talk about lap sealing on the roof. The roof lap sealant needs to remain the consistency of chewed bubble gum or plumber's putty when it's fresh, when it's gummy. If it's not gummy, if it's dried out and hardened, then the hardening aspect of that's gonna allow water intrusion because eventually it's gonna crack and allow that water to go through. So come on back here, we're gonna talk about the patio system. So as you can see right here, we got the full pruner patio system. This particular one doesn't, they, they used to have the, the steps that came out the back. They don't have that anymore. They have the steps that actually come out the side. These cables hold up this patio system. When you take that cable off over there because you're putting the step out, you've got to use these levelers right here to, su to support you, okay? Unless you don't use the, uh, the step system, okay? So come on back around here, I'm gonna show you another feature here. Of course, this is gonna be where your steps actually hook to, and you're gonna have steps that come down right here. We don't have those out, but they do come with this particular unit, and then that's your gate here on the side. Again, when I was talking about, you take this off, and then you put your leveler down to keep the support the weight. One cool feature about this particular unit that I love and I hope that everybody goes to this with the toy haulers is this little feature right here, this little jewel, okay? This little jewel, what it is, is it's a zero gravity door system. It, it's a cable assist on both sides and it'll allow a five-year-old kid to raise this door. You can raise this door up uh, from the inside, you can do it from the outside. If you've got back issues, knee issues, and you really can't, uh, lift a heavy door, this solves that problem. And it's a great system to have. And I'll demonstrate more of it when I get inside here. Up at the top here, you're gonna notice uh, we got an ex exterior awning that this actually comes out over here. Then you actually have the uh, backup camera right underneath of that as well. Then we've got the dual awnings out here on both sides. We'll put those out in a minute. The spare tire down here is gonna be below. You always wanna make sure you carry tools and equipment to change tires. Also, carry some blocks. The reason why I say that blocks, for all six points of this unit, you can raise it up off the ground and change the tire. That's one of the things you wanna make sure that you carry, carry some blocks. This particular unit, of course, it's got the exterior kitchen here. It's got the nice little fridge outside here. It's got the TV out here, outside speakers. And then one of my favorites that they actually came up with, the flip up steps. So we've got the solid steps here. When you step on these, they don't give, give you that bounce and that hovering feeling like, like the other steps do. So, a little feature about this. This particular one has a uh, pressurized arm on it, so it doesn't, it stays level here if you need it, and it's easier to get up and down. These steps are a little bit heavy. To level this, you're gonna pop this pin, and this will slide in and out, okay? Based on if you're on an off-level area or not. So you have that little pin that's right there. Now, I will say this, make sure that you carry a block or something to put right through here. This travels all the way down here and you can pick up a rock or two. We get them all the time out here. Uh, but if, when you lift this up, that rock will travel all the way down here and it'll fall, fall back into the inside of the coach right here. And you don't want that to happen. It falls out right here. All right, now you got the two wings right here. People always ask, how do these things stay in place? Well, you got the piston here Got the two wings right here, and then the door, when we close the door, we're gonna put the door just like that, and locks it in place, and she's ready to travel. And then when you get to your destination, you simply open your door all the way up. This has the friction hinges, so it's not gonna have that little power piston right here. But it has the friction hinges. We're gonna bring this down. Sorry for the tractor noise. And we're gonna pop that back out. I'm gonna get this back to level right quick before we step back in the unit. that fast. All right, let's get inside. All right, 
Welcome to the inside of this Raptor. We're going to talk about what the features are inside here. First, we're going to go over here to the power panel. When you first come into this unit, you're going to have this nice, beautiful panel here. This is the in command panel. You're going to hit 0000. zero, zero, zero. This allows you to integrate with your smartphone. You can use an app, it'll communicate with it. You can turn the interior lights on and off, the exterior lights, security lights, your hot water heater, all of that's controlled by this touch screen or the app on your phone. Battery is showing 14.2 volts, the system's charging. We can turn our water pump on, you can hear it turning on. You can do all your HVAC from right here. You can set the zones, you can set this to go through. Now, this particular unit has three air conditioners and all three of them work at the same time, even with the generator on. There's three quarter ton uh, ACs. That is an exclusive that Keystone came out with, but the Fusions and Raptors have that. Again, you can go in here to your lights, you can change your lights, and you can actually adjust the settings. Your slides, let's go in here. Ward slide, okay, I can go in. You can hear it coming in right now. Press the button, goes out. Guess what? I can be in the bedroom watching with my phone and put that slide in and out now, which is awesome. It's great to have that. You can set it to hitch height, you can go into settings. So this is great. And then it also has the fresh black and gray indicators. While you're sitting in your bed, you pop up your uh, phone in the morning, you can look at your black tank, see if you need to go out there and dump it or not. So it has all of this right here at your fingertips and it makes it beautiful. One other thing that this system has, let's see where they put it, right here. Okay, right, right here. This is the new Furion 4G LTE slash Wi-Fi system. This is an add-on, this is something new for this year. It allows you to um, boost the Wi-Fi signal at a campground, but also you can put a SIM card in it and control your unit uh, from a SIM card or have a Wi-Fi hotspot here. The other cool part is you can log into this and then log into your in-command and then turn your air conditioner on remotely at a different location, which is phenomenal, it's awesome. Okay, so we're gonna step up here and go to the bathroom. Now, some of the cool features about the bathroom, of course, you've got the, the push foot slide right here. Excuse me, the ball valve that's opened up right here. Sprays down. Now, the key here, make sure. Single ply toilet paper. <laughs> got the camera moving there. Single ply toilet paper, number one, number two, or camping toilet paper only. No feminine products, nothing down there because that jams that up. Also, another thing that a, a lot of people make a mistake on. They go in and um, they decide that they hook up their stinky slinky to the campground and just open up all the valves, the black tank and the gray tank. Don't do that. Bad, bad, bad. What happens is, <clears throat> especially in the black tank, all the solids will stay behind and it'll create a pyramid and it'll rupture the tank. That's an expensive repair that you don't want to do. So always put about two gallons in there, put some deodorizer in there, keep your tanks closed until they fill up to a point that uh, they need to be dumped. And then pull the tank valves, open it up, and dump. Okay, so you want to make sure you do that. In here, I'm going to point right here. We've got our sit-down shower. Now this one is nice. It's got the premium shower. It moves up and down in here. All right. Then we got, of course, you got your sink. You got your all of that. Come on this way. We got a wardrobe slide here. Wardrobe slide is great. It has uh, the his and hers closets right here. It also has extra table, uh, excuse me, extra <laughs> drawers right here, not tables. Then we also have our nice king bed inside of here, LED lights throughout, air conditioner up here at the top. And then we also have our TV behind us. Got a fire escape right here. I'm gonna take a peek under here. And yes, they actually do have the nice open area for uh, storage down here. All right, we're gonna come back through this way. He's on back down here to the main cab area. All right, so this is the living room area. Of course, you've got your heater recliners right here. They simply just sit down, pop out. Heated massage. I might have to just stay here the rest of the day because, uh, yeah, got the TV, got a fireplace. What more could I ask for, right? Nothing like glamping here at the dealership. <laughs> All right, other areas here, we got a nice pantry. You got the storage up in here for this area here. USB outlets here, so you can charge your favorite phone. You know, the kids want to do that. This is your uh, AC-DC converter inverter here. 
So what this does is this changes, if you're hooked to shore power, it's going to change it from AC over to DC. And then also uh, power up everything that you need on the AC line. So what things operate on AC? Let's talk about that. That is going to be your microwave, your air conditioner, uh, your TV. All of those are going to operate on DC. Matter of fact, the uh, fireplace that we have right below us here operates on DC power as well. Excuse me, on AC power. Excuse me. AC power. Microwave, refrigerator, air conditioners, all your major appliances are going to operate on the AC. Your lights, your slides, your hydraulics. All of those are going to be on DC power. So this is an AC-DC unit, not the band. So we have that. Over here, of course, we're going to have our large TV. This TV raises and lowers. As you can see right here, it raises and lowers straight back down here, which is kind of cool. Then, of course, you got your Furion uh, sound system, sound bar sound system, and then you have a fireplace. Now, this fireplace actually puts out quartz heat right here, and then it has the ambient. So it actually puts out a little bit of heat right here for you, and that runs off the electric. <coughs> Down in the floor here, what you're going to notice, a lot of units are going away from carpet. If you see carpet now, it's typically because of a slide down here. And then yet you'll see, they'll put the linoleum up here. That's just to make it easier for you to clean. And then down at the bottom, we also have our heat vents. Heat duct vents, so that you have heat ducted all the way throughout the unit from the front of the coach to the back of the coach. Here we have a beautiful, large, massive gas electric refrigerator. This is a Polar Max 8x Norcold. And you can see this, this is huge in here. This is almost a, a good foot and a half of depth inside of the uh, refrigerator. You carry all kinds of your stuff, your favorite chicken salad, whatever you want to carry with it. It's got enough space for it. Also over here, we've got drying rack in this nice large farm tub for cleaning. A magic wand that moves around right there and sprays off all your good stuff. Down here, we got a central vac right here. So we've got where you can plug in and vacuum throughout this area right here. I'll turn that on. Got it powered up. Down in this area, lots of places for pots and pans and storage. Uh, your favorite utensils, all here. Then you've got your Furion cooktop, oven, and stove. Love this. They actually did a stainless steel on the bottom there. That's a great feature. All lit up. As you can see, this has lights throughout this unit. That's the beautiful thing about the toy haulers. They really, really do a phenomenal job of lighting everything up. All right, so now, eh, it may be a novelty thing, but hey, it's nice, it, it accent lights. Turn that right there, and we get our propane. Now, the cool part about the way they designed this too is that it ignites down in the bottom too, so you don't have to use one of those stick lighters to ignite this. And then, of course, you've got the nice more counter space. Plenty of 120 volts, so you can put your coffee maker in here and uh, any other accessories that you want. And, of course, you got plenty of storage up top. You got the storage over here, storage right here, and then even on the top of this, what most people don't realize is this crown molding right here. You need a step ladder to get to it, but you can actually put stuff up here too. Actually, like a uh, little shelf in there. Up here in the top, we've got a fantastic fan. <clears throat> That's great if you're cooking. It'll draw the heat clean out of here. Uh, it moves a thousand cubic feet a minute of airspace, so it moves that along quite a bit. And as you can see, the, the accent lights right here, we're gonna turn it on and off right there. You can see the LEDs that are built into that. Really, really neat. Of course, up here in this particular unit, it's got a, a, another sleeping loft right here, or you can use it for storage, whatever you might need. So we got that unit right here. The toy hall area here is really neat. It has a lot of features, a lot of things. Uh, minimum of a 10 foot garage. I think this one's 11, 11 feet. I've gotta go back and check the specs on it. One thing you'll notice is right down here, that is a beaver tail that you have storage so you can carry straps, gear, tools, whatever you need downstairs there. You also have the steps, the 50 amp cable right here. This, the steps actually go off the side of the patio. We have a rug that comes with this particular unit. That's an optional feature that, um, that comes with it. Or you can, you can order with or without that. You've got the, stair, uh, excuse me, the ladder so you can get up on the bunks or in the storage area loft up front here. This particular unit has the TV system, TV package in the back. This actually drops down and comes down here. So when you're eating dinner in here, 
you can actually watch that. This is called the pass-through dinette. These are right now on the vertical. The reason why they're on the vertical is so that uh, you can actually bring a larger uh, golf cart or uh, let's say a, a UTV side by side. You can come in here, you got more head space here. So you're not having to worry about clearing that. So the seats go down vertical and we'll put them back up here in just a second. Over here, we got a washer and dryer hookup. This, everybody always asks, what is this? This is actually a temperature sensor for the air conditioner. This is the uh, outlets here for the washer and dryer hookup. And then the washer and dryer hookups right here. Now, they designed this so that it would be, uh, you can actually put a stackable washer dryer right here and then actually vent it out the side. Some toy haulers have it in the center and you have to use a ventless, but this one allows you to have that vent out the side. This is the only downfall to all the toy haulers. So no matter what toy hauler you look at, okay, I want you to understand, this is the only heat vent you have back here. So if you're gonna have folks back here, it's, it might be a good idea to get one of those little portable quartz heaters and put it back here, or definitely leave this door open so that they can get the heat, okay? This isn't a fully enclosed underbelly in this coach. That means that you can use this year round uh, and travel as many places as you want. As long as you get the heat on, the tanks are being heated, this particular unit also comes with uh, the heated pads on the tanks. Up here we've got our awning in and out. So I'm going to go ahead and put that out. That's going to be out here out the back so you can see that. we got our switches for our lights in here. You can see you can turn the lights on and off, accent lights. And then also one other button for putting the beds up and down. Okay. So. Let's talk about the beds here. I'm gonna drop these down for just a little bit here and let you guys see this. And you can see it's coming down the wall here. The only reason why I'm dropping it down is so that I can get access to level these out. All right, so you got a pin here and you got a pin here. And it's got a hook bed that this uses. This is gonna lift straight up and this is heavy. It's almost a two person job here. I may not have it. I there we go. Pushed it in place. And you want to be careful, have somebody there with you so it doesn't come down on your head, unlike me. All right, there you go. Got the pin in place there. Pin in place here. That's how these work. A lot of times you don't see this in, uh, in your walkthrough videos, but I'm going to show it to you because I want you to know what you're doing here. Okay. Drop this down just a little bit more for me. Unpin this. And I'm going to show you how this system works, okay? Alright, after losing my hat, get this pinned in place. Now we have it in the bed configuration. We're going to drop this down. I'm going to show you what it looks like in the bed configuration. And if you'll notice up top up here, we actually have the air conditioner. This is the uh, motor. It's raising these up and down on the chains here. You also have AC outlets in case somebody uh, up there wants to plug in something. You've got that. One neat thing over here on the on the window side, we actually have blackouts in here that Raptor put in there's a leather blackout. Okay. This is a storage area for your dinette. So you've got your dinette right here. And where that goes, I'll show you in just a second. But this is actually the bed configuration. So right now we have this, this actually stops. It doesn't go any further lower on the top bed. This is the bed right here. Down below, I'm gonna rotate this over so you can see this. You have two pegs. This peg actually comes out, folds out here, I won't do it right this second, but it comes down to provide support for this lower bed here. So you wanna make sure that you put those down when you're in the bed configuration. Now, when you're in the dinette configuration, or you're wanting to use this as your dining and social area, what you're gonna do is you're gonna raise this all the way back up and yes, it is a long process, so it's going to take a minute here. This is when you can talk about sports, or you can talk about the weather, uh, because it's going to take a minute. This, this doesn't go up too terribly fast. One of the other things 
is the vents here in the corner. Corner. So I'll show you this right quick. You got a vent right here in the corner while I'm holding this button here. That's a two-way vent. That's required by law. And what it does is it allows air to come in and one down here in the bottom corner to allow air out. Okay. People always ask what that's for and that's so that if you have a, let's say a golf cart or motorcycle in here, gas fumes don't build up and it doesn't allow an explosion. So you can allow air to come in and come out. We're almost at the peak here. Once we get it all the way to the top, these lovely little pins right here go in place. Uh, you may need a step ladder if you're if you're shorter. Uh, I even have trouble with it, and I'm a very tall guy. But we pin those in place. Sometimes having to feel our way through that. Might have to edit this part out because it takes a little bit. There we go. Oh, I'm not too tall there, man. Oh, this one's gonna be the bear. Alright, Alright, so now let's say we want to get it down in the dinette position now. So once we've got this, you can notice up here this bed at the top is now pinned in place. It's not gonna fall down, it's not gonna come down. When you're traveling, you want this all the way to the top, both of these all the way to the top either way, and that's going to be the travel configuration is always to the top. And as you can notice here, I rolled this one over a moment ago. Okay, we're going to roll that back, and that makes a seat. And then this, of course, is going to be a nice little cup holder right here. Take that plastic out of the way. I told you it's brand new. Still got the plastic on. You got the two cup holders right here, and then when the other one comes down here and it's, so we've got the slide release we release it right here on both sides and then we're going to roll the seat up all right now you put your table right here in the middle and this is your what we call the pass-through dinette so that is the affectionate term for it so you sit right here you have your drinks you got your table this is your socializing you got your tv drop down right here come on this way and show you what it looks like from this back side here So this is what it looks like from the back side. You got the TV. Of course the TV will be further down, but you can get an idea and indication of what it looks like with that. These are your three seasons doors. Okay, key in place. Come back here. Get this nice plastic, keeps the air out. And then you've got the screen right here, allows the air to come through. And then it also raises up so that uh, you can use this in the fall when it's like a little colder. Uh, as a barrier which is nice this also is lockable um, and then of course you've got the awning out here you've got the the beautiful patio out here you can sit out here uh, have drinks dinner whatever you want to do you can let the pets run around now, let me show you a feature that's nice about the newer technology where it was old school it used to have a huge gap right here now this is a full perimeter what I mean by full perimeter it closes off of this gap the old gaps used to be about this big so this actually goes all the way around so you can feel confident if you have a small pet or a small dog you can let them roam out here all day long unless they can jump over this okay um, of course again we go back here we've got our swing gate here and you would have your steps down here and you'd be able to step off okay now people always ask how fast can we get this system up I'm gonna show you and then also if you're gonna load a toy these gates stay open wide you unpin the cables and the cables drop allow this to drop down and then this opens up by pulling a simple little thing here and your doors come open wide and it allows you to, to run your toys inside so that's how that feature works now before I close all this up, one number one rule is to get your awning in. You see this awning's above us. If you don't get the awning in, you're going to run into issues. So we're going to bring that awning in. You see it now coming in. Now one misconception on all RVs or the toy haulers, unless it's a million dollar motor coach, these do not have the uh, automatic wind sensors. Matter of fact, no RV that we sell has an automatic wind sensor.
So you are the only automatic wind sensor when it comes to getting your RV in and making sure that you uh, keep your awning safe, okay? Now, we're gonna bring this in, we're gonna put lock here, put lock here, slide this in, slide this in. All right, so you close this up right here, pull it back. All right, come on with me. We're gonna bring all of this in, and I'm gonna show you one of the coolest features of this unit. You're only gonna get here exclusively. All right, come on, Timmy. Once you've got this in, get it all good and on the inside. With your door back behind you open, and if you got long enough arms like I do, you can reach out here and grab your cable. Now, I'm barely holding on to these cables. As I mentioned before, come on back right for, for just a second. As I mentioned before, down here on either side, you'll see that it has the cables that make this the zero gravity door. Now, check this out. You can't do this with any other. I just locked that door. Can't get it open. All right, one of the other things that you can do here, now it has an electric unlock on the outside that you use with a key to get it open. But right here, beautiful feature, pop both of those. That's your manual overrides. It has manual overrides on both sides. Check this out. Just put it down by myself. One guy. Just that easy. We'll step back outside again. I'm just doing this with one finger. That's how easy that door is. Keep your cable to the inside. It's holding it in place so I don't have to worry about it. Just like that, that easy. That's the zero gravity, zero G door from Keystone. This right here, simply take your key, put it in there, pop that. It electrically unlocks this and you can pull it down with the handle right there. So easy a caveman could do it. I'll probably get copyright violated for that, but whatever. Alright folks, that being said, this is the Keystone Raptor. We appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got some information from this. And if you have any comments or questions, put them down in the comments below. I'll be glad to answer those for you. Again, I'm James with RV Outlet USA, the toy hauler king of the East Coast. We appreciate you guys, and for at home of the Unreal Deal, come see us. We don't charge fees. We don't add any kind of hidden stuff like that. We don't have a hidden agenda. We just sell these units at below retail and make you guys a great deal. Y'all have a good one.